and a look from our storm team, SkyCam Network, the Valley SkyCam looking over South Fargo and the West Acres area. Quiet this evening, still that hazy look to the skies out there as we never totally cleared out today. 28 degrees on the thermometer. That wind from the southeast gusting to over 30 miles per hour makes it feel a little cool. So bundle up as you're heading outdoors this Thursday night. 35 in Aberdeen. It's 26 out to the west in Jamestown. And a lot of 25s up in northeast parts of North Dakota tonight. 27 for you in Grand Forks. And 28 in Roseau with a lot of mid-20s now across lakes country and beyond visibility slightly reduced across parts of eastern north dakota but the soupiest of the soupy areas along the i-94 corridor down here we have visibilities reduced to a couple of miles or less and i do believe fog will once again be pesky and be a problem during the overnight hours quite a bit of cloudiness moving its way across the valley throughout the day and into the night some snow north of winnipeg as we take a look at the big picture a system working its way on to the west coast bringing rain and snow to the elevated terrain of the Cascades and well, Salt Lake City seeing some snowflakes working their way through. For us, we put this uh, kind of pea soup color on here to represent where the best chance of some of that haze and fog will be as we go through the evening hours. It sets up again mainly on the eastern side of the Red River and down toward the Twin Cities. Some soupy air indeed. Temperatures very steady, the wind very persistent through the 10 o'clock hour. So we head to bed tonight, watch this fog advect or work its way across the map. And we'll start our day with some patchy, dense fog once again, limiting visibility and sunlight for the early part of the day. The best chance of sun will be out to the far south and west. Temperatures to start our day will be in the mid-20s for most to around 30. And again, a lot of frosty scenes and frosty roads out there. So be cautioned for some icy spots on your Friday morning commute. Now, as we head towards midday, the wind switches around, becomes a little more westerly. It won't be as strong, and the fog will be thinning out in the south. Temperatures 30 to 40 degrees in southeast North Dakota, and a lot of upper 20s and low 30s across northeast North Dakota with a late-day chance of some light flakes of snow on your Friday. All in all, it looks very quiet. Here is a look at Fargo's hour-by-hour -hour planner. 27 areas of fog. South wind becomes westerly, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Maybe a few gusts higher than that. Look at this. A lot of clouds still being fairly persistent, but a few peaks of sun possible. The best chance of that will be out to the west, where we'll have 35 to 40 degrees once again for Sisseton, Oaks, Ellendale, 28 in Langdon, and 30 for Devil's Lake. And across western Minnesota, we'll see temperatures warmest along the Highway 10 and I-94 corridors, mid-30s there. Roseau, 31 degrees. Now, a look at a great shot here. Look at this frost gets on everything. And uh, yeah, nailed it. That's right, frost on the nail. Thanks, Connie, for uploading that dandy view and perspective. All right, after Friday's mild temperatures, Saturday looks a little wild. Gusty north winds and a few flakes. Nothing significant as far as snowfall goes, but the temperatures drop to lows in the single digits, below zero by Monday morning, 14 on Monday, 33 though on Tuesday with more flakes possible in a breezy forecast. And then heading into February, it looks pretty windy and chilly. That's wrong. Yeah, that one is in the wrong spot. Yeah, that's got to be wrong. It's like move. a... Man, did like, I forget to carry the one? <laughs> something, yeah. yeah. No, if you no. work on that, we'll get back to you. I did not forget to carry the one. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Hutch. Yeah. Time's running out, but you can help make a difference for kids in the FM area. The 18th annual Cares for Kids Radiothon is underway to raise money for Children's Miracle Network at Sanford Children's Hospital. 100% of the money donated goes to equipment, training, and special programs. Families say they're proud knowing that they have the best care for their kids right here in the Red River Valley. I'm hopeful that we can now look back and think about our experience in the NICU as just a drop in the bucket, <laughs> you know? Just to say it was an experience, we did it, but thankfully for you know everyone at Sanford now we have our little girl home you know healthy. and healthy and just hopefully just get her a little bit bigger and stronger the radiothon continues through tomorrow to donate online go to our website at valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button living with an autistic child comes with its own set of rewards and challenges and now there's help for residents in Minnesota 
The Minnesota Autism Resource website is up and running. It's available for youth and adults with autism and parents, teachers, or anyone who work with or live with autistic individuals. The site provides one source of connecting with others who are also facing similar situations. You can find a map with locations of Minnesota-based autism-related organizations, a calendar of events, links, tools, and information of a variety of autism-related topics. In tonight's Consumer Alert, if you're thinking about buying a washing machine, you may want to buy it now. Prices on washing machines will rise, but will likely do so slowly. Bree Isom tells us about tariffs on washing machines and how they could affect you. The tariffs almost always uh, indicate an increase in prices to consumers. It functions as a tax on items that are imported. Jim Rogers, an economic teacher at St. Mary, says the tariff on washing machines will make it harder to import them. Competition from imports. President Trump promised to protect American jobs during his presidency. This tariff could protect those jobs and make it harder for anything not American made to be sold in the U.S. Or the stepping of uh, tariffs is essentially a, a way to dissuade foreign manufacturers from putting too many of their products into our marketplace. That is also intended to encourage or be an encouragement to manufacturers to consider actually bringing manufacturing back to the United States. Companies like Whirlpool will be affected by this tariff. Whirlpool thinks this tariff will do great things for business. They say, quote, a strong remedy will restore real competition to the appliance market. That will only increase the incentive for Whirlpool and others to invest more in innovation, delivering real benefits to consumers. We are already taking steps to bring new products to the market that we were forced to shelve. Whirlpool says this new tariff will increase competition between companies and overall will be good for business. Later on Valley News Live at 6, one Minnesota kid wins an NFL chance of a lifetime. Up next, before you dish out the big bucks for Super Bowl tickets, know what to look for when it comes to fakes.